What's going on guys? So today I'm going to show you guys how you can increase your speed on I2P. I'm also going to show you how you can actually increase the anonymity of your I2P connection. So how would we go about that? Well, there is a bit of a trade-off. So for those who are always complaining about wanting something faster, realize that many times when something is faster, it's not nearly as anonymous. For example, when you have a VPN, for example, you only have one hop between you, that VPN, and the destination. On the other hand, when you have something like Tor Network, you have an entry node, a middle node, an exit node, and then that reaches the destination. So your traffic goes through multiple parties to reach your website. And most people are familiar with Tor Network, so I figured I'd start there. Now with I2P, on the other hand, all users act as the nodes. So with Tor Network, you have static nodes that are pretty much up all the time except for bridges that may go up and down depending on if it's a voluntary uh, plug-in for a browser or if it is a static or a permanent node now with the I2P network each user acts as a router and so it is constantly changing and has variations in the way you can configure it so I'm going to show you today how you could increase your speed speed to have a single hop if your main priority is speed well then you might just want to go down to two hops or one hop now by default we have three hops so that is the default the default is three hops and we could actually see there's actually some good documentation on the wiki for i2p which is this site right here I'm going to show you how easy it is to either increase the speed or increase the anonymity. You can go as far as seven hops. Now you can't do that on the Tor network, but you can do it with I2P. So that is one thing with I2P. A lot of people are confused because the interface has so many various options, but you just don't need to know about all of them. But if you have trouble finding things, you know, it takes a little while to learn your way around the console, which is this page here. So the router console is the page that opens up when you first start up the I2P router. Let's get right into it and talk about the tunnel length and how we have this option to vary that tunnel length. So with this we can see that this particular A is the first connection from Alice. Now this is an outbound gateway going to the outbound participant, which meets the outbound endpoint, which then goes into the inbound gateway, the inbound participant, and then finally it makes its way over to Bob. From one end to the other, this is how it actually is put together. Now with the tunnel gateway, you can see a little vocabulary here, so if you want to learn some of this terminology, it's very useful. When you're reading the documentation, it's a good idea to brush up on some of that vocabulary. Now, you can also see how some of this is routed as well, so you can see, and what happens is between the first participant layer of encryption is unwrapped to get to the next participant another layer of encryption is unwrapped just enough to get to the next participant so this participant doesn't have any idea about this one you know and so on and so on they only know what they need to do in front of them and there's no need for them to learn things that they don't need to know about and that helps to promote better security and anonymity as well we can go over to our configuration and if we go and open the main console page if you want to just go and check out your HTTP tunnels for example so that's what you're going to want to do if you just want to you know increase your anonymity or increase your speed like I mentioned you can't do both at the same time it's just a trade-off either you care about speed or you care about anonymity and you can kind of meet in the middle as well so we'll do that we'll take a look and see that we can take a look at our tunnel manager here click on that then what we can see is various tunnels we have going on right now now the one we're going to be interested in today is the HTTP proxy this is what you connect to so go ahead and click on that now this is the one that is going to handle your web traffic this is what we're interested in. I actually set it to one hop just for this video, just as a demonstration. It has low anonymity, but if you just installed I2P, you're going to be set at three hop tunnel. So that three hop is going to provide you high anonymity, and that is similar to how a 
Tor Browser to ClearNet site has a three hops as well. So you have that entry, that middle, and the exit. Now it's different on I2P, of course, because each user is also acting as routers in the network. So you can even have a hop variant. So you can actually have random hop variants. So you can Additionally, add additional, you know, enhancement to that by adding a zero to two hop variance, for example. Now, if you want to increase your anonymity, you can increase your hops. So you can simply go over here and you have a four hop tunnel. You can set it to that or you could even go as far as a seven hop tunnel. That is overkill for most people. The vast majority of us only need something like three hop tunnel. Now, for example, if you want to use, you know, your torrents, you might not want to go so slow. You might want to, you know, kind of meet a little lower. Maybe you want to do a two hop tunnel for your, you know, torrenting. Maybe you want to do a one hop for your torrenting. Um, of course, I wouldn't suggest the zero, but, you know, that can increase the speed of your download for that particular configuration. But this is regarding our web traffic we're talking about today. And since so many people complain about speed, which I think is really misplaced because you can change the speed, you can change it. You can actually make it much faster by simply lowering the number of hops between you and the destination. So if you want to get increased speeds if speed if you want something closer to a VPN uh, maybe you'll go with a one hop tunnel now if you have serious security and anonymity concerns wherever you may be in the world you may want to go up to maybe a four hop tunnel but you know unless you're super duper paranoid you probably don't want to go up to seven hop but it's great that the option is there really cool that you have these controls this level of control in how your packets are going to be routed that if you need to do something quicker and it's not really something that's going to need high anonymity well go ahead and move yourself down to two hops maybe one hop if it's not that serious for more serious endeavors you may want to go up to the normal average which is three hop tunnel which is the standard or you could go up to as far as seven so that's that's a pretty cool tip I thought I'd share that with you guys today um, and you can also do the same in I2PD maybe I'll uh, copy and paste some of that configuration as well uh, I don't have that set up on this particular computer um, but I do have I2P plus so if you want to check out I2P plus check out I2P plus github.io or if you're on I2P already you can go to skank i2p and you can check it out there let's rehash real quick if you really don't care about anonymity and you just want to play around you can go to zero hop and it even mentions how statistical analysis on an attack for your anonymity could work in this now there could be some deniability provided by the zero hop tunnel as well just because it's within the i2p network now with a one hop tunnel you have a faster speed and you also have some anonymity more so similar to the level provided by a single hop proxy of different ty types and same with the speed of it now if you really need to increase your anonymity and you don't care as much about speed you could go up to as far as seven now there's also other you know techniques that can be done in these types of networks like packet padding and other things so realize this if you care about speed you can't have everything at once. You can't have total anonymity and total speed. You have to make a compromise somewhere. So I encourage, you know, I think the long game is anonymity. The long game in this world of AI that we are entering is anonymity. So the ones that will last, I believe, are networks that have that resilience to this world we're entering. If you want to try it, go into your tunnel manager and you can click on it and then get into that and change to that. And don't forget, after you do change it, you have to make sure you hit save here. And you'll want to do that to ensure. Now, there's also some more advanced configuration. Maybe we'll cover that later. There's different types of tunnels. You can go and change your exploratory tunnels as well, which is for uh, things like managing the net database. Um, and there's also, you know, other types of tunnels you may have set up so you can have a little difference, a little bit more options here for different types of tunnels. So you may need some things faster. You may need some things more anonymous. 
What's really cool is that I2P makes it easy to do as long as you know where to find it. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and the tips I provided today on increasing your anonymity or increasing your speed. Or meet somewhere in the middle and you can have the best of both worlds a little faster but still some anonymity provided. That's what I got today, guys. Make sure to check out the blog at righttoprivacy.i2p and also at bmc.link slash politictech. Don't forget to like, share this video everywhere so people learn about networks like I2P. And I'll be back later with a video soon to share more on protecting your privacy and security.